Hi everybody, in this video I will be talking about the button and the button text mesh pro in the UI section. So uh, let's get started with the button. Now I'm going to create also a button um, text mesh pro just so you can see the difference. Now this one has this because of the because I've been playing with the fonts but let's just change it to that font so um, now that we have that font we're gonna rename this one just to text mesh pro button so we don't get confused and then uh, yeah let's get started so for the button and the text mesh pro but uh, pro button they have exactly the same things so to better show you this I'm gonna click this little three dots up here I'm going to add a tab and I'm going to hit inspector which is going to add another inspector and for and I'm going to drag this inspector out have it out here so I can show you guys now if you guys don't know if you guys click this lock button it will lock all the components uh, so I'm going to lock all the components of the button and I'm going to check out the uh, text mesh pro buttons so if you look uh, over here you're going to see the values change they're going to be different so uh, as you can see it's zero 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 over here it's four something uh, negative 72 and zero now if I scroll down to the button you're gonna see all it contains is an image component they both contain image components and they both contain button components everything's exactly the same thing so I'm just gonna go over the button and then uh, I'll tell you the difference in a little bit so for the button let's go back now the button let me make the button a little bigger here in the scene view just so we could get a better view of it. Actually, let's see, it was 160. Let's put it to 320, 60. Okay, there's the button. Now it has an image. Now in my previous video, I talked about the image component uh, and uh, the image UI and the raw image. So if you want, you could check that out and see what all these uh, pretty much do. But as you can see, you could change colors, you could add a sprite, uh, you could do something if it's clicked on. Yeah, you could do a whole bunch of stuff right here. Now, this is what we're going to be talking about, the button component. And this button component, interactable, if this is checked, this means that this button can uh, be clicked on. If it is unchecked, it can't be clicked on. So if I uncheck it, as you can see it's grayed out, you can't check it or I can't click it and if I do nothing should happen now for transition transition uh, that just means so I could have none no transition so if I click this button nothing will happen except for the function that I specify right here on the on click event and I'll talk about that in a little bit and uh, but if I have it to color tint let's say normal color is just the co color it is right now so right now it's white so let's say I want it to be uh, I don't know like um, a yellowish for some reason and then uh, when it's highlighted so when my mouse is over it I want it to be a bright yellow and then when I press it so when I actually click on it or while I have it pressed either one so if I click on it or have it pressed uh, I want it to be like a bluish to show you guys and then once I'm done clicking that button, that's what selected is. So I want it to be green. And then uh, disabled, of course, is just if once it's if this is off, if you can't interact with it, that's the color it will be. So I could even change it to any color I want. So I'll put it as a red. And then I could also multiply these colors uh, to by themselves. So it'll just make it uh, kind of like brighter. Uh, some will change color, might change colors depending on what color they are and then fade duration so uh, how long I want the fade to be so uh, let me show you how it is with point one and then I'll increase it and then navigation this is uh, how you want it to navigate in like a scroll rec you can have it automatic you can have it just horizontal just vertical so uh, when you're moving your canvas around or your scroll uh, scroll view or uh, what is it called I think it's scroll the scroll bar and then um, you kind of make a, a what's your canvas you actually make a canvas with the scroll bar it kind of looks sort of like this with the little scroll bar anything that uh, is outside this little canvas or this little area right here 
uh, you won't be able to see. And as you can see, it adjusts. This is something we will create, but for Unity inside, you know, a game. But back uh, to the actual subject. Um, so that's what that is. Now visual, if you go to scene, if you see that little yellow arrow right here that's connecting between those two, that's visual. I could turn this off or on. And as you can see, it's not on the game. And if I create another button, you know, there'll be another one and we'll just keep adding more and more. So you could have that if you want to visualize all your buttons. We'll go back to the game. And then after that, uh, before I talk about the on click, let's check all this stuff out. So like I mentioned, the normal color when it's uh, not disabled. So when it's disabled, it's going to be this red. When it's not disabled, it's going to be this like yellowish. So when I undisable it, as you can see, uh, normal color. So highlighted color will be when the mouse is over it. So it'll be yellow. Press color when I'm actually clicking on it or holding it, holding the button. So it'll be blue. And then once I'm done holding the button or clicking on it, it will turn to green. So let's play it and check it out. And then as you can see, once I hover over it, it turns into yellow. Once I press it, it will turn into that bluish. As soon as I let go, it will turn green. Okay. So that's what uh, the transition is when you have color tint on. Now a button, uh, that's the, the this actual image right here. So that's the target graphic, what it's tar uh, targeting. So for uh, sprite uh, swap, you could have different uh, sprites. So let's say for uh, real quick for highlighted when I'm over it, I wanted to have uh, this knob. When I press on the actual thing, uh, the actual button, I wanted to have I don't know this input field. When I select it, I wanted to have a check mark, and then when I disable it wanted to have this UI mask. So you could of course have different uh, sprites. You could have, I don't know, uh, when you click on it, it unlocks, it has a lock button or some sort of button uh, image of a lock. And then once it unlocks, you know, it uh, switches. And then uh, if we click it, just so I can show you, when I highlight it, it should turn into a knob. So as you can see, it turns into a knob. Now, when I, um, press it, it should turn into this input field, whatever that is. As you can see, it turns into that little box. And when I let go, it should turn into a check mark. There you go. And you could also do uh, animation. Now for animation, I had already created one. So I'm just going to do that uh, myself or add it myself. But you could yourself auto generate. It'll take you to this. Uh, Normally you won't have this if you're starting off a project. What I would do, I would click new folder, type in animations, and um, that would pretty much be it. Let me delete this. And then uh, after that, go to the animation folder and add whatever you want to name it. It could be button animation, it could be button, and that's it. It could be whatever you want. And then um, after that, just save it. And then it will add right here for you. You don't have to do this part f uh, that I'm gonna do. Uh, Unity will do it for you, but uh, just in case, let's say you erased it or deleted it on accident, uh, Unity is going to add an am animator for you. And then uh, right here where it's con where it has the controller, we're going to add the button animation. Like I said, Unity will do it for you, but just in case you accidentally remove it, that's how you do it. And then I'll talk about this animator more in detail later on, like all this update mode, Coley mode, all that stuff in a separate video. But now that I have the button animation, we could check um, what Unity would do. Unity will create this animator. If you go to the animator right here on window, uh, animation, animator, click on it. And also click on this animation to bring down uh, this tab right here. We're gonna need it. So it will add all these uh, little animations for you. And this is just, uh, it's like a, a machine that you could connect all these different animations to and you could tell it when to play these animations. And I'll make a separate video about this as well to go into more detail. But for this, um, all you do is for normal. So for disabled, I just have this animation. Simple as that. If 
like I said, I'll, I'll show you guys how to make animations more in detail later on. Because if not, this video is going to be pretty long. But uh, all you got to do is click this record button. When you have this record button clicked, you could go to any uh, game object uh, that has this animator. Uh, even the child of the game object. And you could um, change anything of their, comp well, most of their components. And uh, it will record what you, uh, what you changed. And uh, so like, let's say I go to this text and instead of this red, I want it to be a bigger size button. I don't think it adds the size, but uh, I could change the color. So let's say I want it to be, I don't know, purple color instead. So, and then I have to unclick this record button and it automatically saves it. So now this is my new animation and Unity uh, creates all these for you. So now these are all different clips. So different like animation clips that you could create. So when it's disabled, uh, when it's highlighted, so when the mouse is over it, you could, you know, uh, choose whatever you want it to be. Mine currently right now is just a bigger button. But like I said, I could, let's say I put record, I could change the button's actual color to, I don't know, something green. So now it would actually get bigger and change green. But yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll talk about that more later on in, an, in another video. So this is what uh, the transition does. You just create different animations for each uh, little uh, trigger. So for when it's normal, for when you're over it, highlighting, or for when you press it, when you select it, all that. So let's, let me show you real quick. So normally it's gonna look like this. My normal trigger is just white. When I highlight it, it turns green and it gets bigger and when uh, you press it that's all it does it turns into that purple or pink purple button and it gets that ugly green and when you let go it turns into that oval and that's all mine does and once I unclick it as you can see it's purple now or yeah purple instead of that red that I normally had and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it for the the animations now for the on click when you want something to happen when you click this button you have to have an on click event happen so for that you add it and right here it has this little drop down menu you could have it off you can have it run on the editor and during runtime or just runtime only some of the stuff don't work in the editor so usually i just have it uh on runtime only but you could play around with that depending on uh, what functions you have so for you to be able to access one of the functions you just have to drag in uh, anything with the script so anything with the component has a script in it so pretty much everything so um, all I would, like I'm gonna what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this text mesh pro button which is this little button up here and I'm gonna click this where it says no functions and it'll bring all these little function uh, menus. So these are uh, functions for the game option, functions for the rec transform, functions for the canvas renderer. Like I said, each uh, component is a script. So each component is gonna have its set of functions as you can see. So I'm gonna go to the game object and I'm gonna go to set active, which is gonna make it disappear and make it reappear. So if I have this unchecked, it will disappear. If I have it checked, it will reappear. What this is doing is pretty much just going to this object and clicking this button right here. That's all it's doing for me. So now if I click play, if I hit this button down here, this button up here should just disappear. So we'll wait for it. So this button should disappear. As you can see, this doesn't do anything. When I click this, it disappears. So that's it for that. And the difference between this button and the text mesh pro button is it has a text mesh pro text uh, component. So it has this text mesh pro text UI while the regular button just has a text component. So if you wanna know what these settings do, uh, I'll leave you a link to my previous video where I talk about everything in this text mesh pro text UI uh, component. Uh, you know from the top to the bottom from debug settings to what all uh, these are uh, to the outline face uh, how to change all this stuff in your materials uh, extra settings I talk about all this stuff 
So uh, check that out if you want to learn more about this. Uh, but yeah, let me check how much time we have left. If we have more time, I'm going to talk about uh, this toggle. Okay, so uh, it's it's been, uh, we've been running this video for about 17 minutes. So I'm going to kind of cut this sh video here. But if you like this video, uh, please hit the like button. If you learned something or if you enjoyed uh, what you saw. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, the next video, like I said, I'm going to talk about is um, going to be this toggle. And if I have time, it will be the slider as well. If not, I'll have to make a separate video for all this. But I'm going to talk about all these uh, stuff in the UI in uh, future videos. I have already talked about camera and these these other uh, little menus in previous videos. So uh, if you haven't seen them, uh, check it out. I've talked about these effects, the, what this particle system force field is, the particle system, everything sprite, sprite mask, uh, pretty much everything uh, you see here except for the UI. So those will be future videos. So like I said, if you wanna see that, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you wanna see as soon as I uh, post it. Uh, thank you once again. Bye.